Hello everybody and welcome back to another redstone tutorial. So once again what we're going to be doing is compacting redstone to make it really fast, super efficient and pretty awesome. So today what we're going to be doing, as you can see by the title, is having a look at this solid state drive. Now it works exactly the same as RAM and you can use it for RAM and it works exactly the same as a hard drive but it has no pistons so technically it is a solid state drive. So I hope you're excited for this, what we're going to do is have a look how it works and then have a look how we can build it and then finally have a look how you can put them next to each other so you can have a big big like area covered with them so you have lots of storage so i hope you're excited for this as i said and let's get starting with the tutorial so what we're going to begin with is by having a look at how this solid state drive works now what we've got in front of us is three different parts of the solid state drive a single cell of it a entire layer of it and then two layers of it now there is a bit of a difference in this one here and this one here. That is because on each layer of this there is only seven cells what you, you can store the data in, seven RS null latches. But there's two rows rows of them making 14 RS null latches you can save to. However, this one has eight, so I'll be explaining how you can extend the cells, basically keep on going. I don't know if cells are the right word, but that's what I'm gonna call them. So you can extend it so you can keep it going off into the distance. So let's take a look at these seven inputs here. So what I've done is alternate them, so they're going 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So it might be a little bit confusing at the moment because I, it, the torches above alternate that, they invert it. But if I put something like this, there you can see it a bit better. There we go. So you can see 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. That is what we're wanting to save the solid state drive. So at the moment we've got nothing saved. So I set from that one torch for some reason that's off. But we've got nothing saved at the moment. And as you can see, all the torches here are on bar that one. And currently we've got no output. So how we save something is by choosing which row we want. So we're going to use this decoder here and I'll explain this in a second, but I will be doing a video on these at some point. And the very, very quick vertical decoders don't take a tick. So that's very, very fast and allows you to write data very quickly. So if we select this one, you'll see they will write the data to these bottom torches here. Except from that last one, I'm not too sure why that last one is glitching. It's possibly because it's running out of signal length or something along that line. It's probably because of this. So let's try that again, shall we? So we'll come over here, press this lever, like so. And hopefully it'll write that data now. So yeah, as you can see, it has wrote the data and that last torch has not gone weird, whatever it's doing for, probably because of the repeater. But yeah, we wrote all our data along there. And now what we'd want to do if we wanted to select where we wanted to read from, so we've got these different inputs, so we'll select in one in binary, and it's going to read the first layer of this solid state drive. So there we go. If we wanted to read layer two, we'll just simply select in binary, layer two. And because we've got nothing saved to it, nothing's going to come out. But let's save something to layer two just to demonstrate. So I'll quickly make a combination of those inputs over the back. So I've gone for alternating it every two times. So every other one gets alternated. There we go, like that. And we we'll can save to the layer two. So we'll just simply select layer two. So we've currently got layer one selected. So we'll press layer two. And it will write that data to layer two, as you can see. And we're also reading from layer two. So this is a very, very quick. Now I've used it for making screens and all sorts. It's, as you can see over here, I'll just fly over here. We've got this big version of the solid state drive. Now, this is a version before I made it a bit better, so this is a bit of an old version, but I've refined it to the one over here. So, let's have a bit of an explanation of how this works. So, I mentioned at the beginning what this first bit do does is decode the signal what you put in. So, as you can see, we've got this little configuration. So, at the moment, we've got layer 2 selected, and what happens, the signal, when it turns off, it turns on this torch here which then activates a monostable circuit which very quickly spits out an item into this hopper and then back again but just enough time for this comparator to measure the signal so that just flashes on so we can demonstrate that probably if we just grab this and if you just watch that comparator we're getting a good spot for watching it can't really see it there there we go so if you watch a repeater in this area here when we put this on it's going to flash momentarily and it probably won't do actually because the dropper's not put it into itself but it would flash very very quickly and um, produce a one tick pulse that one tick pulse first of all goes through this line here and that resets all the rs null latches so it completely 
gets rid of all existing data in it, ready to accept the new data. So that happens in a tick, and it just happens before this line over here. So this is this invert signal, and when this flashes off, what happens is these AND gates are allowed to momentarily take the signal from here and then write them to the RS null latches. So if we can demonstrate that, so if we get rid of that piece there, you'll see that these torches are allowed to turn on. Now I did explain this in a bit of detail in the last video about the screens, so what uh, about compact redstone screens, so watch that if you want a bit more in depth about how this back bit here works. But I will be building it in a bit so you can see it. So it flashes on and all the torches which are connected to these will turn on in the right way. And then what happens is it saves the data in the droppers, which then the comparators can pick up. These torches will turn off and on uh, like to match the RS null latches. And then the last decoder allows us to accept, like read which data we want. So at the moment, the top line is off, which allows these torches to um, basically light up on like the bottom row. So if we put them both on, as you can see, it turns the torches on and off like that. That allows you to read it. And then we've got this glowstone just to transmit the signal upwards. So that's how it works, a bit of a brief summary, and I guess we'll have a look at this layer over here and how we can extend the signal now. So a problem you will find when building this is that redstone only will travel 15 blocks before running out. So to combat this issue, we can extend it again. So what we've got over here is just our usual hard drive. We've got eight bits of data or a byte of data here. So what happens is if we turn this on, you'll see that the signal will just about manage to get to here. So we need to extend it. So because of quasi connectivity, which is a big complicated thing, what you can probably find on Minecraft wiki, um, wiki we basically need to put two piston, two repeaters here. That's so this signal will, this one here will power the dropper underneath and this one just let, let the signal go round. That's a bit crazy and a bit weird, but you have to do it like that. Otherwise it won't work properly and it won't reset the droppers properly so I've tested this a few times all different combinations and that seems to be the one which works so if you want to extend it just try that and on the other two rows just you need to put a simple repeater in between the torches you don't want to put it on a torch otherwise it won't work properly so don't put it like that you want to put it here in between them and then that will just allow you to extend the signal so that's what you need to do to extend the signal and let's have a look at building this now so before we start building it, I did mention at the start and by the video title you'll be able to see that this is in fact a solid state drive. It uses no pistons or moving parts. So that's quite important because it allows it to have less lag when working because pistons cause a little bit of lag. And it just overall makes it faster and easy to run on your computer. And using this minimal amount of like torches, comparators and repeaters allow it to work even faster in Minecraft tick speed because it doesn't have to wait for the repeaters and all the, those things so it's very fast if we count up here you'll see that we've got one tick here we've got another tick here so that's it takes two ticks to write the data including this back here um, so two ticks to write the data and then we've got one tick here another tick there so that's two ticks and then three ticks here to read the data or actually that will turn on anyway so two ticks to read the data because you just have this row here and the comparators or something like that. I'm not sure. One tick maybe. But you do have to wait for the decoders and things like that. That I'll class that as a separate part of the build over here. It's not to do with the hard drive. You can probably put something else on the end. Well, it's equally fast, but it is important that you have a monostable circuit here. So that's a bit of talk on how it's quite fast and you know, you can it's very, very easy to put into redstone computers and you can just get data a lot quicker now using it. So let's have a look how you can build this. So to build one cell of this hard drive slash solid state drive, you'll need these items. Now, some items over here, for example, you won't need to, you won't need this extra torch, you need to do that once and a few things like that. But these are the items you are going to need. You're going to need one lever, 13 of any block you choose, four of a redstone torch, 12 redstone dust, 4 glowstone blocks, 2 droppers, 1 redstone comparator and another block of your choosing which can be the same as the first one so I guess 14 blocks in total. So let's start building this. So for those of you who like to just build it from an image I was just pausing the video here just so you can see how to build it. So let's build it 
uh, step by step. First of all, what you want to do is place a block here, a glowstone block there, and another glowstone block there, with a redstone torch here, and a lever there. I don't know why, I just pressed F1 there. There we go, so a lever there. You want to put two pieces of glowstone on top of here, a block here, a block, two blocks above it, one like that, a redstone there, a redstone there, and a torch there with a block there and a piece of redstone there. So that we have first made this bit of a gnaw gate here, so what we're going to do next is place the droppers in. We want to put a dropper there with an item in, like so, and that's where you put the item. You want to build another dropper facing into it. You want to put a block there, and then you want to place a redstone there, and holding shift you want to place another redstone there. So without holding shift you'll click on it, but with holding shift you'll place redstone. So, now what I want to do is put a block there, I'm going to make a kind of C sort of shape, and then put, well, reverse C, and then put a comparator in there. Now what you want to do is put a torch there. You want to come two blocks out, like here. You want to put a block there, a block above here, and a redstone block. I'm oh, sorry, you want to put another block like that, with some old redstone on top of it. So that's how you want to make that. Finally, you want to put a torch here, a piece of glowstone out here, like so and you want to put some glowstone above it. So this is just one individual cell of the like solid state drive. So now what we're going to do is look how you can scale this up and put them all next to each other in the kind of like Z coordinate, is it? I'm not sure. And then across, so like over there. So we're going to be doing that now. So we're going to be building it right next to here and you'll need the same items again. So I guess I'll put this in a bit of time lapse. So I hope you enjoy this next section. So that is how you'd go about building another cell next to it. And if you want to build even more, you just extend these blocks out and just repeat what I just did. But I'm only going to build it two by two at the moment. So you can see you just carry on like so, going across, and then every after seven like cells, you'd put that little extender in and then just carry on doing what you're doing. So that's how you build it across. Now we're going to build upwards and once again in a little bit of a time lapse. So meet you back in a minute. And that is how you'd make it one block higher or two blocks higher as an extra layer to this. Now there is a few important things I've missed out and I'm going to talk through them now. And I'll just put some redstone on top there because that is one thing I forgot. But on here what you'll need to do is invert the signal. So this redstone wire by default needs to always be on. It's only when you turn it off that it's allowed to save the data. So you want to put a torch here and torch here. And the same with this side. By default, it needs to be off. I mean, it needs to be on. So what you do, you put the torch there and the torch there, and it'll default it to on. And then finally, you need some way to put a pulse through these when you want to, to reset the RS and all latches. So that is where you'd build this contraption over here with the decoders and with this sort of set out. So you'd have the RS and all latch. I guess I can build one over here. Let's just grab a few of the blocks. And now we've got all the blocks we need. I did actually call that an RS null latch a minute ago, but that is a monostable circuit. So what you'd want to do to build this, you'd want to put a repeater there, a block there, a torch there to invert the signal. I do believe, possibly. Yep, that looks about right. Then what you want to do is put a dropper there with an item in it. And then you want to put a hopper going into it. You want to get a comparator output from this. You want to run that into a repeater. And then you want to put a block here and a repeater here you want to put some redstone here a repeater there just to mention i didn't mention in the last clip but that does need to be on three ticks this repeat here and if we just do a quick demo of this you'll see that it should pulse both on and off hopefully oh we need to turn it off again so it should pulse if we remove the torch there we go you can see it pulse and that is how it saved the data so let's move on with the next clip uh, and a torch there and I believe that should be everything yep that looks about right you want to then I'll on another tutorial what I'll be doing is showing you how to build this decoder here so I'll leave that for another tutorial but yep that is how you would build it so it pulses through the RS null actually and then saves the data 
The other one is just using the decoder, nothing fancy. It just allows you to read certain signals. So, that is how you would go about making this like solid state drive. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I put quite a lot of effort into this, so if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like, and I'll be making plenty more videos like this. So, don't forget to click the subscribe button. So, without further ado, I'm going to end off the video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye from Crafting Redstone. But now we the sick have returned.